How to avoid for the KR tasks related time. OKR, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Felipe, this one here is so important. Um, there's always this temptation to put in the OKR, launch by X, ship by Y, launch these features. And that's not the best use of a, a KR. What the best use is, is that when it's launched, what happens, right? What was the expectation of the product, right? Was it users? Was it conversions? Was it uh, a response time, reliability? Like there's all these other things that all the work that's going into the website is supposed to do. And so make those the things that are there. And then you have your roadmap and Jira tracker for the list of items that make uh, the OKR possible. There's a, a, f a fun blog post, I think online somewhere, but it's like they call them OKRs plus the activities, which uh, the acronym is okra, which is a vegetable that's really good. Uh, but it's like um, you have your OKRs, but the activities and project stuff, you got to track separately. Because what will happen, you know, I should share the, the most powerful thing about OKRs is one part is the starting of them and using them as a strategy for your team, but they really are the most powerful at the end of the quarter when you look back on them and say, how did we do, right? Very unobjectively saying we did it, we didn't, we got halfway and then reflecting as a team of, well, okay, we learned so much this quarter. What do we need to do in the next quarter to make up like to like, what do we need to do differently? It's not about blame. It's not about Ryan doing something wrong or Roxanne. It's like, it's none, nothing of that. All of it is to help give you an input to set better goals for the quarter ahead. Like you should be so comfortable crumpling up the OKRs from last quarter after you spend time with them as a team and throwing them away, right? And just focusing on the quarters ahead. Um, we launched OKRs two weeks, uh, two quarters ago and we had very good results on the business side. We struggled to clear, define, da, 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 product development, how to define meaningful cares. Ah. That's a good question. Um, you know, my, my background is in industrial engineering. And so my brain is jumping. If it's hardware product development, you know, are there quality scores? Are there a certain number of runs that need, need to be done? Like what, what's the output? This is the Andy Grove, right? Like, like I think you'd love reading the chapter in the book about Andy Grove because it's a hardware operation. It's like the fab thing needs to be this size and the quality needs to look like this and engineering needs to have something by then. And so that's, uh, a lot of the like how we build the hardware product, but you may also want to set a set of OKRs to track, was that product successful to the user? It was it successful in the field? I guess it's just redefining, you know, who is, who are you measuring success for? Are you as a company producing the thing, but then put your customer hat on, like, why would I love this product over the next 90 days? Well, I'm using it every day. I'm, you know, it's not breaking down on me, right? Like think about it, think about it that way uh, uh, for, for that one. Uh, Chris, which tools? I love a simple Google Docker sheet. We have a few templates online on whatmatters.com, um, but also just like, don't be afraid to go to the whiteboard and write it virtually, like put them anywhere. They're so easy, objective, key results, index card style, like, and then there's gonna be a point as a team, you may search for tools and definitely do that. But first fall in love with how to use OKRs, how to just easily jump in a Google doc to edit things before jumping to the tool because what I found is some teams that jump to tools too quickly conflate the tool not working well or working well with the strategy working well or not working well. So um, Nathan, I think I answered the question. Yes, they do. Hardware product development projects. Ab absolutely. 100%. You know, I, I think OKRs can apply anywhere, like, like taking them out of the startup context. If we're a nonprofit, we should have OKRs too. What are we setting out to do as a nonprofit? You know, this quarter ahead, is it, you know, we could have a few goals, right? As a team, you can, you know, as a company, it's like two to three objectives and key results, right? For the whole should describe everything you are trying to do. Um, Lucien, OKRs are getting things done. Ooh, uh, I think OKRs are a way to articulate your strategy, right? This is what we're doing and this is what we're not doing. The OKRs do a good job of that. Uh, getting things done is, is like, if I'm, if I'm remembering the, the, the philosophy, right? Like the inbox zero, the way to tag your work items, like that's a style of working. So it's not an or, I think it's an, an and. How do you redefine and prioritize OKRs? Da, 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 da. Ooh, Lucas, good question. How do you redefine and prioritize OKRs as you're pivoting and redefining your product and value proposition? 
you know, this one here, I hope is where the learning OKR comes in, right? Because, you know, we, we uh, uh, have been a part of companies, of course, that have done really well, but there have been companies that, you know, we don't talk too much about, right? Because they don't end up being that company that pivots well enough and, and does those things. And, you know, for some of those companies, they are using OKRs, but those OKRs are sending them off a cliff. And, you know, it's up to you and the team to realize, are we heading toward that cliff that's actually not one that's helpful? And in the case example of this company that I'm thinking about, the model that we set out was just unsustainable. If for every transaction, we lost $6. So the cliff was very expensive. And for us, we should have done an OKR exercise of, hey, is this cliff we're going on actually the right one, right? Shouldn't we be maybe be focused? This is the small, medium business market example that I always keep thinking about. It's like, we should have pivoted away from consumers where we were losing the $6 to one that should have been a more small, medium business focused product where we were making money. And so the pivot, the redefinition, you know, these KRs are meant to help you every week, right? Like, cause you can track them. We're making progress. We're not, this is red or yellow. What is that telling you as a team to do, right? Whenever a KR goes from green to yellow or yellow to red, it should mean to you as a team, we need a plan to fix it. And if it ends up staying yellow and red, it's like, well, shoot, what's going completely wrong here? Is it, oh, that's right, COVID happened. Okay, we, we now know it's COVID, so we have to change all of our strategies, right? It's responding to an external uh, 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 situation. But what if this red and yellow green are actually things happening in your team? And, uh, you know, from a product, like it's just not clicking. Well, then I think that's where, Lucas, you and the team have to maybe switch to that learning mode a little bit and say, well, how do we change our product to be more useful? What do we need to do to prove that this pivot we're about to take works? You know, that sort of forces you to get out of the, you know, Figma and coding environments and kind of go outside and the Zooms, right? Because it's still COVID time, right? But like spending time with your customers to find out really, do they get value of what you have? Um, Omar, how to define the OKRs that matter? That's a, that's a beautiful question. I think uh, if you can find a way for, you know, the OKRs are the what and the how, objectives are the what, KRs are the how, can they also help answer the why, right? When you see the OKR, you clearly know why you're doing it, right, as a company. You know, the beautiful thing about companies is they create jobs, they help solve problems, they do so much for people. And so when you define your OKRs, you really want to help make, you know, your teams, the people that work for you, because uh, I assume this group is, is predominantly leaders and the founders of these companies, they should look at them and go, oh, I see what I'm supposed to feel, right? If you're a delivery company, it's like empowering our local businesses. That's the lens I should take on the objective. But that doesn't mean your KRs shouldn't have revenue numbers or targets that are more monetary, right? Um, and, and this is a piece of advice I give for nonprofits, for profits, right? What, what we are here, and even in governments, it's really important for all of our organizations to understand how we survive, how we're sustainable. Right. If the people that work for our companies or work in governments or work at nonprofits don't understand the engine for what makes it work, I think we're doing a disservice to the folks that work for us. Right. They should understand that, you know, more deliveries. Right. Yes. The satisfaction of the you know restaurant owner and all, like all these things have to be at play. And so that's my long winded way of saying um, uh, uh, go for the why in defining your OKRs. But but don't be afraid to put the a revenue target, a number, not a revenue target if it's if it's if it seems disconnected, but there's like a there's more like um you know a, a KR for a nonprofit, by the way, right? Like why do you have fundraisers or galas or balls, right? You do it so the nonprofit can do all the other work. And so you shouldn't hide that from the team. I hope I know it was a little rambly answer, but I hope it that that, that message gets across. Uh, maybe I'll take a few more and then, and then Roxanne, I can, we can switch back. Uh, any particular tips on OKRs with startups from an incubator? Ooh, uh, you know, from an incubator perspective. So I guess that probably means that you're in discovery mode. And so that learning OKR and don't take six months to learn it or a quarter to learn it. Like what, 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 what can you craft that you could learn in two weeks, right? Or two days. One of my favorite exercises is, uh, uh, it kind of applies to OKRs, but it's really anything, right? It's around really around like customer discovery. It's like, well, if we had six months, what would we do? Six months, right? To learn more about a customer. 
and you know, you'd come up with all, all the things you could do. And it's like, okay, well, you don't have six months. You have, you know, just two. And it's like, you come up with all the things and it's like, well, wait on two months. What if you have only two weeks, right? To do these things. You're like, well, okay, if I don't have two months to do two weeks, what if you only have two days to learn about your customer? What would you do? And then my favorite is, well, what if you only had two hours? So yeah, that, actually that's the exercise. It's two months, two weeks, two days, and only two hours to learn. And so in that incubator sense, if you're trying to learn something, what would I have to do to learn that in two months, two uh, weeks, two days, and two hours? And you kind of see all the different paths and you're like, oh, actually this two day one, I could learn a lot from that one. Let's, let's do that. Um, Alejandro, I do not know the answer to that question. I will try to find, uh, oh yeah, Melanie, this is a very important question. Is it okay to have OKRs set for the full year and then split them? Sort of. Uh, I think it's really powerful for you and the team to set a really long-term objective uh, and keep like an OKR, like maybe one, just one, like for the year ahead, if we're successful, this is the one you kind of keep in your pocket in the corner, it's in the whiteboard, maybe in the top right, but it's like, if we're successful in the year ahead, what has happened, right? What key results will be true? Is it a user target? Is it a, like what, what says we're successful and how would you describe that objective? And when you're seeing that, it's like, okay, that's our most North star. So for the quarter at hand, what are the two to three objectives and key results that we're gonna craft that keep us pointed towards that most North star? And so you say to split them within quarters. I would not say split them. Don't, don't make it where you're crafting Q1, two, three, four, a year ahead. What you should do is spend every quarter at the start to say, that's the North Star. This is what we're going to do in this quarter to, to get as, as far as we can. And then, you know, you, you, you do that work. And then at the end of the quarter, you go, well, okay, how far did we do? Okay, cool. That North Star, this is how far we did. You know, what if you actually got a lot closer to that North Star than you thought? Well, let's set more ambitious goals. Or let's say you didn't. Well, let's rethink our goals or our strategy. And maybe this North Star, we have to change that too. You and the team should feel so comfortable at any time to change your OKRs if they're pointing you in the wrong direction. But the key is getting that alignment and commitment from the team, right? Hey, this isn't working, right? We all see these reds and yellows. We need to change these things together.